She was one of the most dazzling stars of Hollywood's golden age, a legendary beauty with rare violet eyes and a fiery personality to match. But in her later years, she struggled with mobility and she was forced to use a wheelchair for most of her final days. Stay tuned to hear the whole story as Facts First presents why Elizabeth Taylor spent her final days in a wheelchair. A Legend Among Legends Elizabeth Taylor was born February 27, 1932, in London to American parents who were both in the art world. Her father was an art dealer and her mother a former stage actress. Elizabeth inherited her mother's love for performing and started taking ballet lessons at a young age. She had a distinctive feature that would later become her trademark, her stunning purple-hued eyes. When World War II broke out, Elizabeth and her family moved to Los Angeles, where they hoped to find more opportunities and safety. It was in Tinseltown that her beauty and talent caught the attention of Hollywood scouts. The young girl signed a contract with Universal Studios at age 10 and made her film debut in There's One Born Every Minute in 1942. She then moved to Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, where she found more success and fame. Elizabeth became a bona fide star at age 12 with her iconic role as Velvet Brown in 1944's National Velvet, a film about a girl who trains a horse for the Grand National Race. The film was a hit and established Elizabeth as one of MGM's top child stars. She continued to work steadily through her teen years, appearing in films like Little Women, Father of the Bride, and A Place in the Sun. She also made headlines with her personal life, marrying for the first time at 17 to hotel heir Nikki Hilton. As she grew older, she wanted to prove herself as a serious actor. She achieved this goal with films like Giant, Cat on a Hot Tin Roof, Suddenly Last Summer, and Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf. She won two Academy Awards for Best Actress for Butterfield 8 and Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf. She also became one of the highest paid actresses in Hollywood history when she received a million bucks for playing Cleopatra in 1961. She was not only an icon of cinema, but also fashion, jewelry, charity, and romance. She had eight marriages to seven men, most famously to actor Richard Burton, whom she married twice. She had four children from three of her marriages. She also amassed one of the most impressive collections of jewels in the world, including the famous 69-carat Taylor Burton diamond. Elizabeth was also a passionate advocate for AIDS research and awareness, founding the Elizabeth Taylor AIDS Foundation in 1991. This video is sponsored by Morgan & Morgan. Did you know that hiring a lawyer for a car accident or an injury is actually really easy? With Morgan & Morgan, you can do it all from your phone in just 8 clicks or less. As a true 21st century law firm, they've modernized the injury law process so you can submit your case details, sign contracts, and even text your attorney and legal team throughout the duration of your case. They can be your first recourse in the case of a car accident, and you don't pay any fees unless they win. So if you're ever injured in a car accident, you can check out Morgan & Morgan. You can submit a claim in eight clicks or less without having to leave your couch. For more information, you can go to forthepeople.com or dial pound law. That's pound 529 right from your cell phone. A lifetime of pain. Scoliosis is a relatively common condition that causes the spine to curve sideways, sometimes forming an S shape or a C shape. It can affect anyone, but it usually develops during childhood or adolescence. It can cause pain, stiffness, breathing problems, and reduced mobility. It can also affect one's appearance and self-esteem. Taylor was born with scoliosis and suffered from back problems all her life. She was diagnosed as a child and had to wear a brace for several years. She would have received her diagnosis earlier, but when she was 12, she was injured while filming National Velvet when she was thrown off a horse and she sustained a back injury. At first, doctors assumed the source of her chronic pain was the result of solely that injury, but after further investigation, they discovered it was her curved spine that was the true culprit. She didn't let her scoliosis stop her from pursuing her passion for acting. Despite suffering a great deal of pain at an early age, she made her film debut at age 10. But the scoliosis took its toll on her health and quality of life. To make matters worse, she had several accidents and injuries that aggravated the condition. Because of this, she underwent spinal surgery in 2004 to repair seven compression fractures in her spine. She's also developed other health problems like pneumonia, congestive heart failure, skin cancer, and brain tumor. By the end of her life, she was confined to a wheelchair and suffered from chronic pain. 
After enduring misery and hardship for many decades, in her later years, she refused to have any more surgeries, despite severe neck issues. One thing after another. Scoliosis wasn't the only health issue she had to deal with. She faced a series of illnesses, injuries, and surgeries that tested her strength and resilience. One of the most serious health problems she experienced was pneumonia. She contracted it twice, and both times she nearly died. The first was in 1961, while filming Cleopatra in Rome. She developed a severe lung infection that required emergency tracheotomy to help her breathe. She later said she was pronounced dead four times by doctors who tried to revive her. The second time was in 1990, when she spent three months in the hospital with another life-threatening case. Another health challenge Elizabeth Taylor faced was addiction. She struggled with alcoholism and drug abuse for many years, especially after her seventh divorce from John Warner in 1982. She checked into the Betty Ford Center twice in 1983 and 88 to seek treatment for her substance abuse problems. Taylor wrote in her journal during her first rehab stint, I feel like hell. I'm going through withdrawal. I'm so, so tired. She also suffered from various injuries throughout her career that worsened her scoliosis and back pain. She broke her back five times due to falls or accidents on set. She had two hip replacements, one in 94 and another in 95. She also had skin cancer on her leg and required surgery to remove the cancer. One of the most shocking health scares she had to contend with was a brain tumor. In 1997, she had a seizure and a stroke that led doctors to discover a benign tumor in her brain. They successfully removed it, but it left her with some serious memory loss and speech difficulties. Immobile and bedridden Elizabeth Taylor died March 23, 2011, at age 79. She'd been suffering from congestive heart failure and was hospitalized for six weeks before her death. Her four children were with her when she passed away at Cedars-Sinai Medical Center in Los Angeles. In her final days, Taylor was reportedly immobile and bedridden, but still communicated with friends and family through phone calls and Twitter. She also received visits from celebrities like Elton John, Colin Farrell, and Debbie Reynolds. Her death sparked an outpouring of grief and tributes from the media, Hollywood, and her fans. She was honored with a private funeral service attended by about 150 guests, followed by a public memorial service at Westminster Abbey in London. She was buried at Forest Lawn Memorial Park in Glendale, California. Her final resting place is right next to her third husband, Mike Todd, who died in a plane crash in 1958. Elizabeth's legacy lives on through her films, her charity work, and her family. She left behind four children, ten grandchildren, four great-grandchildren, and millions of admirers. Now it's time to hear from you. Did you know that Elizabeth Taylor spent so much time dealing with chronic pain? Let us know in the comments section below.